Hello, and thank you for joining me at Fireside Stories. Today's story is The Dog That Stole Home by Matt Christopher. Harry chased after the tennis ball, leaped up two feet into the air and caught it in his mouth. Head held high, he trotted back to Mike and dropped the ball at his feet. Woof, he barked as he ran back down the street to wait for the next throw. Great catch, Harry, Mike praised him. Maybe I could talk Coach Wilson into putting you in our outfield. Sure, and maybe I'll get my picture in the paper, Harry replied. He posed as if the cameras were already snapping. Even though he was a fuzzy Airedale, Harry was able to communicate with Mike through extrasensory perception, ESP. Mike and Harry had read each other's thoughts for the first time in the pet shop. Of course, Mike had bought Harry right away. Now as he wound up to throw the ball again, Mike wondered what he'd ever do without Harry. Well, for one thing, you'd still be pitching instead of using that great throwing arm at second base, Harry replied. Mike laughed as he hurled the ball down the street. Sometimes he forgot Harry knew everything he was thinking. The ball arched higher and further than before. Again, Harry caught it, but instead of bringing it back, he danced around just out of Mike's reach. Can't catch me, he teased. Mike could tell Harry was grinning, even though he had a tennis ball in his mouth. Mike groaned. He knew from previous experience that he had to chase and tag Harry before he'd get the ball back. He took a deep breath and charged down the streets, legs pumping. Mike was just about to touch Harry's fur when out of nowhere, a tan and white dog twice the size of Harry broke away from a girl and joined the race. Harry was so surprised he dropped the ball. The big dog snatched it up and took off. Hey, come back with that, Mike yelled. Sam, shouted the big dog's owner. Bring that back. Harry was after Sam like a shot. Don't worry, Mike, Harry's thoughts swept back to Mike. I've got it covered. I'll say, thought Mike, as he slowed to a walk. That dog is faster than the speed of sound. Thanks, old boy, Harry panted. In a matter of seconds, Harry caught up with the thief. He tried to wrestle the tennis ball from Sam's mouth, but the big dog just wouldn't let go. He whipped his head from side to side, growling menacingly. But Harry wouldn't scare. Instead, he nipped Sam lightly on the nose. With a loud yelp, Sam dropped the ball. Harry scooped it up and trotted back to Mike. The big dog was still yelping. That animal of yours should be fenced in. It's dangerous, cried the little girl. She ran, rushed past Mike. Sam, oh my poor little Sam. Little, Harry echoed. I barely touched the big lunk. Besides, he ruined a good race. Lucky for you, he did too, Mike chuckled. I was this close to beating you. That would have wiped the grin off your face, I bet. Harry stood on his hind legs, put his four paws over his eyes, and whined pitifully. Mike snorted, then turned to see the girl and her dog continue the walk as if nothing had happened. Michael, come here and bring that dog with you. Michael whirled to see his mother standing on the front porch of their house. From the look on her face, he knew that he and Harry were in big trouble. Okay, Mom, I said. Mike and Harry, Harry went to the house. Mike, I saw Harry snap at that dog, his mother said. I know he's not vicious, but I'm worried that he might try to nip someone at your game tomorrow. I'm afraid Harry will have to stay home until he learns not to bite. But we're playing the number one team tomorrow. If we beat them, we'll have a chance at the playoffs. You know I always play better when Harry's there, Mike cried. Well, you'll just have to play without him there tomorrow. Please put him in the backyard and teach him to behave, Mother said. She turned and went back into the house. Grounded, Harry huffed. I might as well be put in solitary confinement. He looked up at Mike's worried face. Sorry, pal. Guess I should have had let the big bully have the ball. 
Mike sighed as he opened the gate to the backyard. What was he going to do without Harry's support tomorrow? The game against Robin Hood Arrows started at 4 o'clock the next day. The Arrows were up first. Mike, playing second base, kept glancing at the spot by the Giants dugout where Harry usually lay. The spot looked very empty. The Arrows got off to a flying start. The leadoff batter, Robbie McAllister, laced a double. Then the Giants pitcher gave up a walk and a single to put the Arrows on the scoreboard before the first out was made. A blooping fly over second base, just over Mike's head, added a second run to the first. Rats, thought Mike. I bet I would have had that one if Harry had been here. He pounded his fist into his glove. The second arrow batter struck out, but another double put them on three runs before the fly ball ended the first half of the ending. The Giants came to bat, and it was one, two, three, just like that. The arrows batted again and again. The leadoff batter belted a solid double. The giant pitcher, Omar Petri, looked like a little shaken and gave up two walks in a row. Arrows four, giant zero. Mike heard the first baseman grumble. At least I had Harry's support when I played pitcher, Mike thought. Out loud he yelled, come on, Omar, strike out the next guy. As Mike's word had given him just the help he needed, Omar fired three scissors in a row for first out. Two fly balls added the last two outs, and the Giants were back up to bat. Omar led off with a double to right field while Mike warmed up in, on the deck. The second batter, Monk Solomon, took four balls for a walk. Now my chance to make up for the missed catch, Mike thought as he approached the plate. The first pitcher came in just at waist level, and Mike swung hard, a solid hit down the base, first baseline. Dropping the bat, Mike took off. The arrow's first baseman, Jim Morrow, rushed forward and scooped up the ball. Mike put on the burst of speed, but Jim beat him to the bag. Mike was out. A strikeout and a pop-up ended the inning. The arrows could do nothing in the third, but the Giants at their turn at bat made a turnaround and came up with two runs. The fourth and fifth innings were scoreless for both teams. The arrows didn't add to their 4-2 lead in the top of the six either. The Giants, on the other hand, earned two runs to tie up the game before the inning ended. That's more like it, Mike thought excitedly. Too bad you're missing this one, Harry. It's a humdinger. As Mike got his glove and ran out into the field, a familiar voice entered his mind. It sure is, it said. Mike's heart jumped there in his usual spot, tail snapping back and forth was Harry. Hey, how did you get here, Mike cried. Harry grinned. You'll never guess, he said, and pointed his nose towards the stands. Mike glanced up and saw his mother watching him with a smile. A call from a teammate reminded Mike the inning was about to start. What changed her mind, he asked Harry, Harry as he ran towards second base. I'll explain later. Just get out there and play some heads up ball, replied Harry. The arrows threatened to break the 4-4 tie at the top of the seventh. Their first batter nailed a single and Omar walked the second. A fly out, out held the two runners at first and second, but then Arrow's big strongest batter, Robbie McAllister, came to bat. Get ready, pal, Harry said. He looks like he means business. Harry crouched down low. Omar studied the batter for a second and then fired. Crunk! Robbie connected for a line drive that was just missed the top of Omar's glove. The giant short stop, Rich Gates snared it and snapped it to Mike at second. And then Mike relayed it to the first. A double play. Okay, cried Coach Wilson, clapping like crazy. Let's do it. Let's break the tie. Mike realized that he was third man up. Heart pounding, he wished Omar fly out. Then the second batter, Monk Solomon, swished at three pitches. Belt it, Mike. 
Clay said calmly. Home run will do, you know. Sure, said Mike as he stepped into the plate. It's easy enough from the sidelines. He gripped the bat and waited for the first pitch. Crack! He laced the pitcher's first throw to deep right center field. The crowd cheered as it, he bolted around the bases. For a moment, he thought he'd hit a homer, but Coach Wilson held him at, to a triple. Attaboy, Mike! said Coach, slapping him on the shoulder. A little more speed, you might have made it home. Rich Gates was up next. He struck out his last time at bat. There was no telling what would happen now. Mike, listen, Harry's voice in her said. Yeah, Mike answered, concentrating on the pitcher. Here's your chance to score, Harry said. Listen to me and listen closely. Harry got up and walked over to third base. He stopped just behind Mike. You're going to steal, Harry said. Mike stared down at Harry. Steal? I can't, he cried. Not in Little League. You can. When the pitcher doesn't have the ball, growled the Airedale. Now get ready. When I give the signal, give it all you've got. You've lost your marbles. I'm not fast enough to beat the ball. Nevertheless, he crouched with his hands on his knees, heart racing. He waited for the next pitch. I don't know who's crazier, me or that dog, he thought. We'll talk about that later, Harry chuckled. Get ready. The heiress pitcher stepped onto the mound, glanced at Mike, and then turned his attention to Rich. Ball, boomed the ump. Then, just as the arrow's catcher was in the act of tossing the ball back to the pitcher, Harry yelled, catch him! Then he took off, bolting towards home. A split second later, Mike was after him. It had never been so important for him to tag Harry. Mike was halfway home to home plate when the giant fan began to shout, Go, Mike, go! Faster, faster! His mother's voice ran above the rest. He was within five feet of the plate when he saw Arrow's catcher covering the plate, his mitt ready to catch. Hit it! yelled Harry. Mike did. His hands touched home plate just as the catcher reached up for the ball. There was an endless moment of silence before the umpire called the play. safe. The crowd exploded in one of the loudest roars Mike had ever heard. Grinning, he stood up and brushed the dirt off his uniform as his teammates swarmed around him. Unbelievable, cried Omar, slapping him on the back. I've never seen anyone run so fast. I'm surprised you didn't trip over your own dog, Coach Wilson said, smiling. It almost looked like he was daring you to beat him. Mike looked down at Harry, who grinned and winked. The two teams shook hands and then headed to their donut dugouts. How'd you get out anyway? That's what I'd like to know, Mike asked Harry as he picked up his glove. Well, Harry chuckled. Mike turned to see his mother approaching. Mike, that was amazing, she said, ruffling his, Harry's hair, fur. Thanks, Mom, and thanks for bringing Harry. Well, I didn't have much choice. I had never seen Harry look so depressed, she said. Depressed, echoed Mike. Harry stood up on his hind legs, put his forepaws on his eyes, and whined like he'd lost his best friend. See, cried Mom, throwing up her hands. Mike burst out laughing. You're crazy, you know that, he snorted. Harry moved one paw and peered up at Mike. Yes, replied Harry, but lovable too, right? Harry laughed again, scooped Harry in his arms. You bet, he whispered. Thank you for joining me today. If you'd like to hear more, please subscribe. And while you're there, please also hit the like button. Until next time, happy reading.